Hey everybody, thanks for checking in with part two of we're pouring our concrete patio with those curved flexible concrete forms. So what's going on right now is we're pumping concrete over the top of this house. And in order to do that, you know, the, the dispatcher has to mix up some bags of Portland cement in his hopper with five gallon buckets of water. So he has about four or five of those five gallon buckets of water mixed with the Portland cement. And that's what kind of greases the line. It lubes the line and allows for the concrete to go through the line without plugging it up. So in the beginning, you always get a little bit of that loose watery cement and you just spread it out and get rid of it. That's kind of what went under the forms. We'll clean all that up after we strip the forms, but you gotta get you gotta get rid of that stuff somewhere. And that's, you know, we decided to get rid of it on the inside of the forms today rather than pump it on the outside and pick all that mess up later. And you can see the slump coming out of the end of the hose now. That's pretty much our regular patio pouring slump, probably about a around a five and a half, six. And we got a mid-range water reducer. We use a 4,000 PSI concrete here in Maine. We get a lot of freeze and thaw cycles from November to March. So we need a good rugged concrete with air entrainment in it. And then when we get done, we're gonna end up stamping this. So you can come back for part three to see the stamping part of this. But after we stamp it, we put on a really good concrete sealer that helps protect it against you know, the freeze and thaw cycles. So. We're getting going with the first truck. We got two trucks coming today. It's about a four to five inch thick patio. We got our matter rebar in it. We're using our Gator Bar rebar, which is a fiberglass rebar. And we've been using that now for a couple of years. We're really liking that rebar. It's really lightweight. It's really strong. It's just pretty, it's just easy to use. So we use that a lot. Up against the house, we glued on some what we call foam ISO strip. It's so it's like an isolation strip against the house so the concrete doesn't bond to the house. If, if for some reason the patio slab did want to move, we don't want the concrete sticking to the house, otherwise it's just gonna break. Now what the homeowner did, the homeowner hired uh, the gravel guy, the excavator, to come in here and dig out the loom, dig out the topsoil. So he dug out, he dug out 12 to 16 inches of topsoil, put in about a foot of gravel, and then compacted it really, really well, sloped it all the way from the house. And now our job, my, you know, our job, we were hired to come in and set the forms, set the rebar, pour and stamp the concrete, and then clean it and seal it. So that's what we're doing. We didn't really get involved with the, the gravel prep on this. What we like to do is we like to get that first truck, you know, whether it's eight, nine, ten yards, dumped right out. So that's why... It looks like we're going quite a ways with this concrete before before we do anything other than mag really just mag the edges is we want to get the first truck dumped out get him out of the way so we can get the second truck backed in and get him ready to go while we're doing the screeding and the bull floating now what I'm doing is I'm magging my pad right to that metal pin we put a nail through at grade and I magged a pad right to that nail and that slopes from the house it slopes about an inch and a half to where I mag that pad and then about another inch and a half out to the outside edge where where Luke is over there on the right magging those edges. Now if it looks like that first truck is going a lot further than halfway it is it's because it is. We got something else we're going to pour up top that I'll show you in another video but so we got you know the second truck is going to do the piece that's up top too. Sometimes it just doesn't matter how much you try to cover the house. You always get some splatters on it, it seems like. All right, so now the guys, they got the edges all magged. They got their their pads so they can screed off. I'm Darren screeding right off those poly metaforms. Those, those, I got the video, you know, an earlier video I did. I'll, I'll link you to that one down in the description below about how we set those forms. Those are really nice forms for setting up curves. And then you can screed right off the top of them, so it, it makes it actually really easy to pour a curved concrete patio like this. Right now we're just getting under the deck. This is about a thousand square foot patio, and we're going to stamp it. We did put some color in the concrete. It's called Gull Gray, so with the gray, you might be thinking, well, concrete's gray already. Well, it is, but if you look in the background at those those blocks, kind of like that, that retainer wall, 
those look more white than gray to me. And that's kind of what concrete, after it cures up for 30 days, it looks kind of white like that. In order to keep it gray, darker gray, you got to put gray color in it. And that's what we did. So we'll, we'll keep it a little bit darker gray, and then we're going to stamp it with an, a majestic Ashler Slate stamp. And then we'll also add like an, a black antiquish color to this after it's all done. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet so you can come back and see uh, how we stamped it and how it all ended up looking. We got a couple guys helping today because Harvey's helping. He's over there on the left puddling and that's Sean on the right puddling or raking the concrete. Um, a thousand square feet is a lot to stamp at one time plus plus we're going to be stamping the piece we're pouring upper on the other side of the house too. So um, the, between the five of us, you know, pretty pretty experienced concrete guys, we should be able to stamp this all right. We're kind of hoping it stays. It's a little bit overcast and hazy right now. We're hoping it stays that way and the sun doesn't come out. And that'll just make our job a little bit easier. But you can see how easy it is to screed around those curves. It's just a matter of what's nice is, you know, it's always... It's always important to, number one, set the form to grade and then to drive your pins down below the top of the form. The pins, the metal stakes that hold the forms in place. Then you can just creed right over the top of them without having to go around them. And then like Darren was just doing, one guy can stand right on the outside and screed on the outside of the forms. This is the part that gets a little trickier when it comes to screeding. You know, screeding off a, what we call a wet pad. So screeding right off the wet concrete without digging in or leaving a hump is kind of a little trickier. It's a little more advanced skill than most. And we call we call that kick screeding. So we kind of kick in our feet where, we, where the concrete comes out from under our feet. We kind of kick that in as we're screeding so we don't have to stop. We can just we can just keep pulling the screed, the concrete back, screed it flat, and then kick the concrete back in where our feet are. I'm using I'm using a four foot magnesium bow float and you can see it's got those rounded edges on it. I really prefer the ones with the rounded edges. They they don't leave as deep a line on the two edges as like like a square ended bow float would. And that's really important when it comes to finishing concrete. That's really important just to have uh, very minimum lines on the surface that you have to either mag float out or Let's say you were power troweling something, you would have to power trowel them out. Now, you can barely see the lines there. If those were square ends, those those lines would be a quarter to a half inch deep just because of the way the, the bow float's made. So if you're going to be buying a bow float, definitely look into the one with the rounded edges like this one. And we never, we always use magnesium. That straight edge is magnesium. The bull floats magnesium. Our mag floats are magnesium. We never use wood. I know a lot of guys use wood floats for stuff. We've never used wood floats. And we always have, uh, on all our exterior concrete like this, no matter what it is, we always have air entrainment in it. And, you know, we don't have trouble with the concrete blistering or peeling or, or closing off the surface too smooth using the magnesium I don't know I don't know you know I hear people some other people say that well you got to open it up with the wood and then you can go over it after I've, we've never had trouble with that we've always used magnesium stuff so um, I don't know what to tell you about using wood versus using magnesium but that's what I got to say about it so what we don't want to do here now is we don't want to pump too much concrete into this area Come and then find out like we're really really high because there's no real easy way to get the concrete if we're high out of here and then up into the front piece unless we use five gallon buckets and we don't want to do that so we're gonna get we're gonna get this section I call it a bay we're gonna get this bay pulled down and then before we'll know a lot better where we're at as far as being high or being low before we pump any more concrete in there That's a 14 foot long screed too. We have them in all different lengths. And then if you've seen any of my other videos, we use we use power screeds a lot too. We we don't typically use a power screed on something that has a lot of slope in it like this because we want to make sure there's not going to be any puddles at all in this if it rains or any water that comes off the roof. 
you know, we want it just to gradually work its way off the slab. And sometimes with a power screed, you can you can tend to get the vibration might sag the concrete a little bit, and it's it's a little bit easier to get a little puddle in the in the brand new concrete slab than it would be if you're just screeding it by hand. How do you think it's coming out so far? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, this is pretty typical stuff for us. We we do a lot of these every single year, whether they're you know back patios like this, whether they're patios, a pool patio around a big pool deck, um, front patios, you know, a patio next to a deck. That pipe coming out of there is for uh, they're going to put a hot tub in that corner. So they'll have like an eight-man hot tub, and that's for the electrical for the hot tub. It's a little bit, concrete's a little thicker over there. It's around six to seven inches thick in spots over there just to hold the extra weight. You can see how nice that bow flows, so that looks really smooth. So we'll, like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to come back. Uh, we're going to go up and pour the one up top. You'll see on part three video, and then... In the meantime, you know, as this is setting up, we'll come back and just keep checking it because when it comes to stamping concrete, the timing of the starting of the timing is really important, especially on something this size. Um, we'll have about we'll have about uh, 45 minutes maybe to get from one side to the other before the concrete is just too firm to put a stamp on it. So we're going to have to really be hustling once we start. You can see we didn't make much mess. We got just about the exact amount of concrete we needed there. You know, if we take out a shovel full or two, that's no big deal. We can pick that up easy after we when we come back to strip the forms. What we don't want is a wheelbarrow or two wheelbarrows too much in there. Now we're kind of kinking the line and strapping it in place so he can pick that boom back up over the top of the house without dripping any concrete from the line because there's still a lot of concrete in that line, especially that metal part of the boom. That's all full of concrete. And basically just gravity is going to make it fall out of the line as he pulls it up over the roof. So we'll just put a little kink in it like that and that keeps it from coming out. Now where Darren's walking down there, that, that slope section, there's going to be some stairs there. We're not sure if he's going to do concrete stairs there or wood stairs there. So he, that's yeah, that'll come at a later date for him. He was still unsure. It's pretty expensive to put concrete there. Um, not, again, you'd have to get another pump truck, which is almost you know fifteen hundred bucks right there just to get the truck. Versus, I don't know how much how much lumber fifteen hundred dollars can buy you, but probably quite a bit to do a set of stairs like that. You know, and then all the labor and materials required to set up, form, and pour, strip a, a set of concrete stairs, those would be pretty expensive stairs. So I just want you to make sure you come on back to watch part three so you can see what we're going to do up top here, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.